Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop. How's everybody doing out there? Of course, if you're watching live, why would you care if I said that? Our guest tonight is Elaine Clark. Hey, Elaine. Hi. We are going to talk about the whole voiceover biz and all the stuff that she does, which we're going to run out of time just talking about each one of them. So, our George is not here. He's in Denver, or at least outside of Denver, a DOA at, where are you at? Yeah, I'm at the Podcast Movement Expo at the Gaylord Rock of the Rockies uh, Convention Center, a Marriott property. Cool. All right. Well, if you have a question for Elaine or for us about, about home voiceover studios, but about the voiceover business, throw it in the chat room, because Jeff Holman's in there taking all those questions down, and we'll get those questions to Elaine right after our second break so or after our first break so anyway are we ready everybody ready no earthquakes it's not raining voiceover body shop right now voiceover body shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source Elements, the folks who bring you Source Connect. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. VoiceActor.com, your voiceover website ready in minutes. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. And by World Voices, the industry association of freelance voice talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard, and sitting down is... (laughs) And who are you? (laughs) I'm George the Tech. There we go. All right. I and told this him is, I had one minute. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> and this is voiceover. Body shop. Or VO BS. All righty. Well, the big hashtag yesterday was Hurricane. Uh <laughs> I wrote that the first time. I came up with it. Oh, you came up with that. Okay. <laughs> well, I did say it. Okay. I'm sure 20 people thought of it at the same time. But yeah. You know, anyway, most, yes, we had yeah. a Hurricane. Yeah, I mean, it was a tropical storm. The problem with, with, with rain in, in Los Angeles is, you know, they made it sound like it was a snowstorm coming or something. The most you know, dangerous part is people driving because they don't know how to drive with yeah. that stuff. The thing that's frustrating about Los Angeles is it's a massive metropolitan area. And, of course, all the media outlets cover the entire metropolis from San Diego up almost to Santa Barbara, right? So. Right. They're reporting stuff, and it only matters for this narrow band of people, right? Right. And it makes the rest of the whole 15 million people freak out. So yeah, anyway, so, it was a little yeah. bit of a freak out for nothing. But I, for those that had flooding, I hope you're doing okay. Yeah. Well, nothing here. It was just, just wet. Yeah. I mean, L.A., the basin and the valley has the most incredible flood control ever. You know, so it's not really a problem for, for us directly, but the mountains and the areas and the deserts, really, that's where it gets scary. So, yeah, we hope everybody's safe. Apparently it wasn't too bad. And then, yeah. and then in the middle of that, and I kept thinking, you know, what could, you know, what would be worse is having an earthquake in the middle of this. What happens? We get a 5.1 earthquake in the middle of this thing. <laughs> I was like, well, it can't, it can't have a, we can't have a fire. So we no. rule that one out. So we'll what have an earthquake types, instead. Yeah. Somebody typed in the uh, comments, locusts? <laughs> no! So, no Alrighty. locusts. We're no safe. Locusts. Yes. All righty. Anyway, we have a great guest tonight. Uh, one of our favorite people. Elaine Clark has spent over 40 years in the communication industry. Almost as many as me. As a coach, director, audio engineer, producer, casting director, actor, author, app creator, podcaster, curriculum developer, and business owner. And I did that in one breath. From 1986, wow. when Elaine founded The Voice One in San Francisco, uh, she sold it, uh, the voiceover and acting school in 2019, and Elaine has continued her quest for better speech communication. And she's proud to have trained and launched the careers of over 5,000 voice actors. Oh, you're the one, huh? From her trademark, making it mine method quickly to incorporate subtext to specific use of body and gestures to achieve desired results. Joining us from the Bay Area, the one and only Elaine Clark. Hi, Elaine. Hi. How are you doing? 
I'm doing great. We didn't have earthquakes and we had 10 minutes of uh, light rain. Oh, well, that's nothing new in San Francisco. It's in this, you know, but here it's in the middle of August. It seemed like well, January only warmer. It was yes. just kind of weird. Anyway. So welcome to the show once again. You haven't been with us for a while, but uh, we're glad to have you with us. You know, I, I start with my standard question. How, or more importantly, why did you get into voiceover? Well, I was a theater major in college, and I also uh, got a degree in education. And I was in plays, and I was also a newlywed. And we're still married after all these years. Oh. And uh, yay. Um, but we've. Uh, but he was like, uh, am I ever going to see you? Because when you're in a play, you're gone for like three or four months in rehearsals and shows. And then someone told me about voiceover, so I studied it. This was in 1980. Um, and, also, and then I put together a reel-to-reel, -reel, went out there, started getting work. Mm, it didn't take, and it didn't take long, because as an established well, actor, the transisting to voiceover is actually a little uh, easier. Well, it was uh, it was a bit of a challenge, because I, I uh, moved from Louisiana, so I had a, had a Louisiana accent. Um, and my vo and I was younger. My voice was a little bit higher with the accent, um, so I had to work on it a bit. But I had a lot of like teenage stuff that I would do, you know, yeah. for spots. <laughs> cool. Mm -hmm. So, I, so how long did it take? You started. Let's see. If you started in 1980, you started a voiceover-centered acting school in 1986. What prompted you to do that? You can only do so many lunches and coffees. So at the time, uh, Can I pick were, your brain. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. So the, at the time, there were only like 50 voice actors in San Francisco. And so uh, how did you get in? What did you do? What's going on? And so I, I just sort of naturally with my education background, I thought, well, you know, maybe I should start a school. Went into this, um, this casting director's office. They had an empty space in their office. And they said, hey, do you want to rent that? And I went, okay. And that's how I started the school. <laughs> there you go. How many students did you start with? Oh, I don't know. Um, a dozen or so. And then it kind of grew from there. So that I would have, you know, around 250 students a year. Not all of them would go. Some of them were, were ones that were taking multiple classes that had come in from the year before. So it just kind of progressed. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Now, in 1995, we'll, we'll go ahead a, nine years. We'll jump ahead. Okay. Whoosh. Right. Uh, you wrote the first voiceover training book in 1995, There's Money Where Your Mouth Is, and it's now in its fourth edition, and it's got a different <laughs> cover now. Yeah, that's this <laughs> keeps, one. Keeps changing covers. Uh, yeah. So, well, this one is the, uh, yes. So, I, um, I it was funny because I thought, you know, I know a lot of stuff. I was directing video games, um, narration. I was I had worked in an advertising agency. I had was a media buyer prior to this. As I was getting my my voiceover career going, I thought, um, you know, I'm going to write a book on voiceover because there isn't a training book out there um, that I am going to, uh, and I that way people will leave me alone and I'll just be an actor. So I uh, I was talking to to someone and said, hey, here's the the direct line on uh, for the guy who's who's the publisher over at Random House. Here's his direct phone number. So I called him up, talked to him. He said, uh, "Write a proposal." I wrote a proposal. Two weeks later, I had a contract, and that's how I got the book. Outstanding. Yeah. So, you know, how did you structure this book, and what makes it unique? I mean, one of the things I about books about voiceover is unless you hear it, it's you're you're just describing stuff. How did you how did you format it well, and make that work? Well, this is, um, well, it's, it, you can tell the difference in, in size, you know, from where, it's, where it started to, the, uh, to how, where it's become. But it's, I have a lot of techniques so that I've worked on over the years. And the techniques are uh, how to put it in your body, how to move, how to, how to interpret the script. Because, you know, learning the voiceover business, people would go, that's great, but you had no idea what you did. So I had to figure it out for myself. So, uh, so the first part is about technique. The second part is about application to a whole series of different types of scripts. And the third part is about marketing. And then in the midst of it, that I have people that I've interviewed, whether it's Bob Bergen or uh, Dave Fennoy, 
there are just a ton of people that, that are out there uh, uh, in their different areas of expertise so that they would say what kind of microphone they use, what their setup is, here's some, here's some um, advice. So it's really very, very thorough. Um, so I just wanted to, to give what I had inside me and say, here, this is it. And people say, I, sh I should create an audio book of it. No, it's too much. I did something else instead. I created a podcast. Ah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Early I, on in the podcasting days, how long have you been doing well, it? Well, I wouldn't say that was early on. So the what happened then, I changed publishers and I went uh, to to the one that I currently have. Um, and uh, and this is at All Worth Press. And then they had a meeting, uh, this is like in 2018, and said, "We, uh, your name came up. Um, and so we want you to write a book about uh, called Voiceovers for Podcasting. I said, okay. And then I wrote a proposal. They sent it to me. They you know, sent me in advance. And then uh, that's when I, I came up with the idea for this. So what I did, this is so funny, I was holding it up with one of my, one of my old cassettes. Cats, yeah. Look. <laughs> I forgot What's that, that I put that behind it. <laughs> Just hold it there. Yeah, that's, that's where, and I was at Real to Real prior to that. So anyway, that's a, a glimpse at, at a past thing. That's funny. Um, uh, that was unintentional. The, uh, so anyway, so I thought, well, let me take it from my advertising background. And one of the things as a media buyer we had to work on uh, horizontal versus vertical um, formats and how do you do advertisements within that format like news talk is vertical because they're different people talking and it could have sports in there but uh but a uh, music station is horizontal it plays different music but within that same genre so I thought well this is something that people should know when they're setting up their their podcast how to establish it and also I thought well you know if I was going to get into it I want to know what's easiest if it's from one person to a dozen people or a team so i just went through the various styles of podcasts and said here's the positive thing that you can get out of it and here's the negative that way people can then figure out what to do right so but I, that was with like a, a hundred hours of research and and stuff to go go along with that yeah and and then there were those of us who were in broadcasting or public service directors who do those saturday morning and sunday morning shows that were on at 5 30 which was essentially podcasting. It's like intro, body, outro, boom. And Absolutely. Also and that's why I was coming from the same background. I had uh, my class three, you know, uh, radio DJ license back in college and would put on a long song if I saw, saw my friends, and, you know, that I wanted to <laughs> hang out with for a few minutes and then come back. You know, Anagata DeVito was great. Uh, so <laughs> if that song came on, you knew there was some, dum, dum, dum. something going like six on minutes. in the studio. <laughs> yeah. what, what we refer to as a crapper. Okay, there you go. <laughs> so, so after I wrote the book, people kept saying, well, where's your podcast? And that's why I thought, well, I'll, um, uh, I'll create real talking tips. And that way people can see what I'm suggesting in both of the books. Uh, so that they can, uh, and I use the educational background that I have to say, here's the problem, here's how you solve the problem, now here's your homework. Now I'm not saying hard homework, but just something as a takeaway, and you can hear it of course as a regular format in audio, but you can go to my website and, and uh, get, the, get the whole visual of it, or go to the YouTube site to see it as well. But it's like, because I, I know that people learn um, uh, auditorially, visually, uh, and kinesthetically. So I try to put all of those things together. All right. Once again, we're talking with Elaine Clark, and we're talking about voiceover technique and podcasting technique and all the things that she teaches. If you have a question for her about any of this stuff, throw it in the chat room right now, and Jeff Holman will get that question to us, and we'll get to it in our next segment. So I think that's a... Elaine is the one person you should really be asking all these questions to. So, uh, Okay, so along with that... It, You've created two, not one or two or three, but two voice diction and speaking apps. Activate your voice and adding melody to your voice. Tell us about those and, and how they well, benefit a voice actor. Well, everything I do is uh, I, I see a problem and I try to solve it as efficiently as possible. And 
And the Activate Your Voice is a 99 cent app that's uh, five minute speech and diction because I realized that people had poor diction. They needed to, uh, needed more resonance, uh, resonance, and they also needed to work on uh, keeping their volume going all the way through to the end uh, of their phrase. Don't run out of breath at the end. Right, of and then you have to <laughs> fix it and their technical issues, which you two might know something about. So uh, anyway, so that's how I created that. And then... Um, and I, I realize that my signature really as a coach is about how to embody things. Uh, so it's like I, I try to take things out of people's heads. You know, there's a basic amount of information that you have to know, but it's really when you put it in your body that you understand it. And we make movements all the time, but no, don't really think about it because it's just part of who we are. So I broke down all these movements. And then I, uh, so I have an interactive a app that's uh, adding melody to your voice so that you can play around with, you know, what is a dot? What is an arrow up? What is a carrot up? What's a carrot down? What's a wiggle wobble? You know, what are the different, you know, how do you stretch out a word? So then there are ways that they can record themselves. Yes? What is, a, what is a wiggle wobble? A wiggle <laughs> wobble. wobble. Is, it's like jazz hands. Oh, it you know, is it's so like, nice. it's like, whoa. Oh, it's okay. like, wow. You know, so it just wiggles. I mean, that's a technical term, wiggle wobble, but jazz hands is really <laughs> more accepted. Wow. <laughs> right. That's just hunky dory. Um, yeah. Is that a technical term too? Yes. Hunky dory, absolutely. <laughs> Along with a number of other terms. Um, so yeah, give us give us another example of that. I mean, because people are you know they're always marking their scripts, or at least they're supposed mm -hmm. to. And uh, what what are what are some of the tips you give people for you know making what? sure that they do those things? Well, it's about how to take direction quickly or how to make, how to solve a problem quickly. So, if, uh, and I would just see people write on a script going, slow down on this word. Well, by the time you read that, you that. You, you know, you're, you're past it. Yeah. You're way past it. So, and if, uh, uh, if you're given direction and they say, can you just make that real short or real long or make, give it some emphasis or whatever it is, there are just ways that you can just put a dot or a wiggle or an arrow up. Yeah, so if you're gonna, I'm gonna set something up so I can arrow it down to, to finish that thought. I'm gonna stretch it out and then I'm gonna speed up around it. And then it's gonna be smooth, but then it needs to be shaky. So the thing is we don't want to be the same. Otherwise that's boring. So when we're reading, most people get into what's called reading conditioning, which all sounds the same and it's very metered. But we all talk um, most sentences with three different tempos. So it's also about how do you put it in your body using your right hand, your left hand, and two hands together. Where do you put it in the power box? A lot of this is broken down in the real talking tips. I have some in the app. So it's like every time I realized that people needed something else, I just created it. So, I mean, the, the, uh, adding, uh, the adding melody to your voice is just $9.99 and, you know, Apple and Google Play take most of it, you know, so, you know, I, a little bit comes my way, but it's, I didn't do it for the money. I did it because people needed it and the app uh, and real talking tips is, so there's a lot of information and ways to practice at home. So, um, so that, which is, you, which is the most important thing is you can read right. all about this stuff, but if you, unless you practice it, it's just, you're just reading it. Yeah, but how, see how, how many different movements that you have right there. I would then take those, the shrug of the shoulder and the stretching out the hands. And the, there's, I think that was a wicker wobble. So anyway, <laughs> so how do you take that and just say it within you, within everyone's way of performing, how do you interpret those little markings so that it has, so that it has a smoothness and a variety to how you're reading something? Once again, we're talking with Elaine Clark. If you've got a question for her, throw it in the chat room, because I'm sure you all have questions after she's talking about all this stuff. Uh, now, you, we know you coach voice actors, and we've been talking a little bit about podcasters, but you also coach business professionals and teach them how to speak better, because I've seen some people get on some of those political talk shows or business talk shows and go, why did they put this person on? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that sort of thing. <laughs> How do, well, how, do you, how do you teach them? Well, it's all about communication, but with different scripts. That's right. really what it's about. So, and different purposes. And um, so, with um, so, uh, what I if I'm working with uh, a business executive, they're usually ha going to some sort of event or being interviewed or doing a presentation. They want to make sure that X happens in a particular way. So then, uh, I watch usually watch them for uh, do their thing and then add 
comments of how to correct it and then how to get feel comfortable when you're doing it. Some people are getting ready for a TED Talk. Some people are uh, going on uh, being interviewed for a product that they've um, that they've created or a service that they have that they're going to go on a junket. So I help them with how to succinctly talk about what their their call to action is or what their main thought is because especially when someone's in business they have so much stuff that they know it's easy to go on a gazillion tangents and then people just know that you have a, a lot of stuff but they don't know why you're actually talking so it's just uh, so a part of that is just shaving off what they're saying mm, all right uh, Notice how I just shaved off right there. Yeah. Now explain what you mean by shaved off. I'm like, well. Yeah. Well, it's about that? how do you stop, stop mm -hmm. talking and don't make it constant. So right. you have to make it. That's how the interaction happens. Uh, I know a couple of people that could learn that. Just mm -hmm. take a breath. Finish, finish your thoughts. Stop. Let somebody else say something. Yeah. And when you start editing, that's when you realize, man, oh, those little breaks are great. Absolutely. Yes, they sure are. <laughs> Just like articulators are great for editing. Right. So the T's, the D's, the K's, you know, so if you leave them off, you don't have as easy uh, an edit. So that's why, you know, just uh, the, some of the exercise, like, exercises like ta 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 are, are in the, the app. Ah, all right. What, what's the name of the app again? The, it's the, activate the, Your Voice. Right. And the other one is adding melody to your voice. I, I recommend those to anybody who is learning how to do voiceover or has been doing it for 40 years. Like, I, like Elaine I have Bynum people that say they do, they work on those right before any meeting, before any recording. So mm -hmm. it becomes sort of like they're, they're centering. Mm -hmm. uh, now you're also a featured instructor in Terry Nicole's voiceover e-learning accelerator course. How did that come about? Hey, you're doing everything. <laughs> well, I get connected. Well, I was, um, uh, Everett Oliver was, was coaching Terry and said, you know who you should go with? You should, because uh, he said, go to, go to Elaine. I'm, uh, I'm called the reprogrammer. So I take people out of their head and put them in their body and figure out, not that she was, but it's just like, let's reprogram. We just hit it off because she came from an education background. She got, I think she got an MFA in it. So it's like, whoa, you're way ahead of me. You're using bigger words. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, <laughs> I just got, a, got an additional degree. Um, so uh, anyway, so we started talking and then she started talking about e-learning. And I've, I've worked on at least a thousand e-learnings over the course of time. Um, either either recording it, uh, performing it, um, casting it, uh, uh, engineering it, something, you know, directing it. So the whole thing for, for years, since the beginning of dial-up, you know, we had to wait for it to come out. <laughs> yeah, it took a while to get there, but we actually could hear it. So she started talking about this um, voiceover e-learning accelerator and then wanted me to provide some content. And that's where I add, uh, added the melody section to it and some other, other parts to it. And it's a really, really good um, you know, self-guided program that you can just, you can get um, that to, to, anyway, she just did a, a fabulous job putting it together and I'm, I'm really pleased to be part of it. All righty. Once again, we're talking with Elaine Clark. Got a question? Throw it in the chat room. We've, we'll get to those in just a couple of minutes. Now, you also have a connection in Bristol, England, teaching video game acting classes for Brava UK. Uh, how did you get there? I mean, you're you're working well, with everybody. Well, it's all about relationships, yeah. you know. So, I mean, the one reason why George and I are friends is because we were the only ones left after a Vio Atlanta thing, and then we just looked at each other and said, "Our plane's not leaving for a long time." Went to a restaurant and had some drinks, and that's when we became friends. It was really just because we looked out; the whole yeah. hotel was empty. Yeah. So that's when it all happened. So that was so. It's really about building relationships, and uh, so she was in San Francisco and took some classes with me and then we start I thought well she's like the British version of me in a way um, uh, so she went back to England and was uh, used her demos that, that I you know because I, I produced demos so I produced them for her and it was getting her tons of work uh, but she was already uh, had been in radio for a long time and had a lot of experience and she said I think about um, starting going to start a voiceover school so just prepare yourself you know I had mine for 32 years it's going to be a lot of you got to set your set your time limits because it can be a lot. So, 
anyway, so she she does everything really classy. So I um, I'm not, not sure whether you know that I've you know I've worked on like 85 video games, either as a director, casting, uh, producing, engineering, uh, Ed, and I've uh, and I directed the original uh, American version of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and a few other uh, anime and some some cartoons. So I thought, well, I'll just do the um, character. Uh, so I, I'm ahead of the character track. So I just wrote a script, uh, and then we go in and and we record it uh, over in their studio uh, in, in Bristol, which is really fun. And then I, of course, do Zoom classes, which which is fun because it's uh, morning in the U.S. and it's evening for them, which I like. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's always always fun doing stuff in Mumbai. Can you yes. can you can you do it at, at you know at Julian. six in the morning? And like, mm -hmm. uh, and like, do you want me to be coherent? Yeah. <laughs> <Of course. laughs> and it's late at night for them, yeah. and they're and they've been yeah. doing it all day, and they're like, yeah, they're hardly coherent either. Yeah. Well, one and, of the things of, about me, not to cut you off, but yes, um, no, no, sorry, um, but it was uh, I I like to find patterns in what what is there so I have I've been teaching character stuff and directing it for years and years for decades so what I do is in it, when I teach it is just I do you learn this and then with that and then with that you, and then you build it because also having an education degree a lot of people just do a dump of information and it's really hard for the actor to uh, filter through all of that it needs a needs a program in order to to get there and I think that most everyone, when they start teaching, they just say, I'm so excited. I have so much stuff, blah, and then it just is there. Right. And so over a course of time, it just, it just sort of changes. Yeah. You got to chunk that stuff down. You can't, yeah, you can't like aim a fire hose of information at people and expect them to know that. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, this is fascinating. I'm, I'm going to list off a bunch of your skills. Okay. And let me know if I left anything off. Let's see. Entrepreneur business owner, educator, coach, actor, author, audio engineer, app creator, podcaster, who's worked in some capacity or another in commercials, narrations, e-learning, museums, museum tours, video games, anime cartoons, toys, film looping, film acting, and apps. Did I leave out anything? Um, yeah, um, audiobooks uh, yeah. is one. So I, uh, I work with some of the, the major um, uh, publishing companies and record famous people in my studio. And also sometimes I record myself. Yeah. I'm currently working on a really cool re reading. Uh, I'm narrating a really cool uh, book about art right now. Yeah. So anyway, so uh, that's, uh, I'll give you a little, little tidbit of information. Sure. So in the 1960s, uh, well, 1964, the... Um, uh, they had the New York World's Fair, and they wanted to bring in a, a huge statue that was at the Vatican. And so they put it on a U.S. nuclear sub. <laughs> I remember seeing it. It was the Pieta. Yes. But can you believe that? That is crazy. Anyway, so I'm just, I, I just love history, and I love um, hearing about all that stuff. So anyway, that's one. On the other is I'm, I'm a playwright. I've written a few plays that have been produced. I'm working with a, a, a really good producer right now, so we hope to get, the, get this comedy up and going next year. We had some fits and starts. You might have heard of the pandemic that was kind of giving a Camilla problems in the theater uh, world. But uh, anyway, so the goal is to try to get it out there for the world to see because it's really pretty funny. All right. Uh, once again, we're talking with Elaine Clark. Got a question through it in the chat room. We're going to take a break right now, and we're going to get to your questions right after that. So don't go away. We'll be right back on Voice Over Bonnie Shop. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on the Voice Over Bonnie Shop. Setting up for Voice Over recording on the road can be a real hassle. You can't bring your boom stand with you. The solution? After six long months, Harlan Hogan's VoiceOverEssentials.com finally has their popular desktop stand back in stock. The Harlan Hogan Adjustable Height Desktop Stand fits U.S. and all international microphones with its thread adapter. It features quick assembly and has a low center of gravity for great stability, making it great for home and on the road. The two-way adjustable desk stand gives you infinite height adjustment from five and a half to eight and three quarter inches. 
and the rubber-ringed low-profile base fits perfectly into the pre-cut desk stand slot of both the Portabooth Pro and Plus. They're back, and they're keeping the pre-shortage price. Damn inflation has become their motto. The Harlan Hogan Adjustable Height Desktop Mic Stand, just $39.95, and only at voiceoveressentials.com. And now's the time on the show where I talk about our sponsor, Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect. And I've seen a new version. It's less and less vaporware all the time. There's a Source Connect 4 on the horizon. The alpha tested version is starting to get out into the testing community. And I got to give it a run through on Friday. And it's a really nice design. And more importantly, it's more actor friendly which is what I think a lot of us are waiting for. Something that's a little more just actor friendly, more easy to use. Hey, what's up, Roland? Roland wants to sit here where I'm doing my spots. I'm gonna be moving here in a second. Um, and uh, so they are uh, got an incredible product coming on the horizon. But in the meantime, Source Connect 3.9 is your friend. Get set up, start learning how to use it, and get familiar with it because it's a tool that's gonna make you go to the oh, next level in your right. business. Anyway, thanks again, Source Elements. Let's get on to the next spot so we can get to those questions right after this. Oh, hey, uh, I am about to shoot uh, the fourth of five lessons in this year's big old course that I'm giving away for free called Getting Started in VO, Thriving in the AI World, where we meet what it takes to get into the world of voiceover, what it takes to be better at voiceover, with the incursion of artificial intelligence and maybe some things that you can take advantage of in terms of artificial intelligence as well. So uh, we're in the midst, it's been a, it's been a banger. We're, we're in the midst of five lessons, all free. Uh, if you go to voheroes.com slash go, you'll get those lessons. And it will culminate with the opportunity to join as a VO Heroes Pro at a very special price with some very special bonuses. But first, take the free class. Just go to voheroes.com slash go. That's voheroes.com slash go, and I'll see you for all five lessons, and let's see what happens with your VO career. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying VoiceOver Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem, VOBS.TV. And we're back. George is moving his location because mm. they're kicking him out of the booth he was in. <laughs> <laughs> He'll return shortly. Anyway, let's get into some of the audience questions, of which we have a large amount of. Uh, starting with Terry Briscoe, Elaine, what is the most common mistake you see with new voice actors? Thinking, thinking it's all about the voice and not about the message. So really, it's out. We are a vehicle for presenting our clients' information to them and also um, using the rhetorical triangle uh, properly, which is ethos, logos, and pathos, so that you have you have your authority, your logic, and your emotion that's equally balanced. And a lot of people that are starting will do too much of one. It'll be, you know, you're talking happy about something that is just logical, and the, and there's another one that's, you know, that will just say logic, 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 and you don't feel anything. And then uh, with the authority. Um, I mean, one of the things I struggled with at first with the word authority, I kept thinking of my high school principal bounding down the hallway when someone had done something bad. So when I heard, saw the word authority, I would just think I had to kind of bristle. But a, an authority is someone who, who knows it so well that it looks like it's nothing. And so that's a really hard thing that's, that most people overlook. Um, and there are a lot of tells uh, when I hear someone that they are not the authority and therefore not bookable. Excellent. Now, part two of that, what techniques or skills did you learn or develop that you've moved on from over the years? What, what, what has, you know, were you working on and doing and they're like, eh, maybe this doesn't work anymore or never really worked, but there's some things that, that you've, you've, you've moved, uh, moved on from. Well, I think that the biggest one for the first uh, I think eight or nine years that I was teaching, I gave a lot of intellectual direction. How do you do things? This is how you break down the script. This is what you want to do. Here's the stuff. Let's go ahead and study. And people became really book smart. 
but I realized that it got locked in their head. And that's why my biggest change happened when I said, okay, how can we do less with the book smarts and more with the body? So I started using the body first and how to, how to, how to feel and, and commit and get that, you know, get the authority, stand a different way, use, use that away. And that's, um, and also, I developed a program called Making It Mine that I trademarked uh, that's a different way of looking at motivation the moment before, intentions that are actions, the need that's the through line, and E that uh, stands for emotions. So by uh, integrating the techniques, uh, and they're in the book, uh, There's Money Where Your Mouth Is, and also in the podcast, and also the subtext, working on that, then if you have that, you know, a lot of the script stuff, uh, the script analysis... It's useful, but it's really only about 10% of the job. The rest of it is what do you do with it? And I think that it was flipped at first when I was teaching. Yeah. Make, make, in other words, you became more organic with, with how you got people to, to do stuff. And what, works, what works within you know, your particular parameters and your voice and how you talk? You know, I, I find that a lot of people who get into coaching you know, after you know, doing voiceover for a year or two, uh, or have been doing it for centuries, they tend to try to create people in their own image, and that's mm -hmm. that's not the the idea. You've got to you've got to find what is individual, what is unique about that individual, and how does that work for them? Well, it's interesting. Also, I think uh, I used to have things really planned out, what I was going to do and how I was going to teach it, but then. I realized when I had my general idea of what I was going to do, but gave it some freedom, that that was a better way of teaching. So I often just listen to what someone's doing. I try to find and see if, if, uh, if they have a pattern that is causing the problem and then identify it and work on ways to, to, to break it open. I, we have song in the background now. This is getting so... Fun, George. We can, we can hear, yeah, he's having a great time. <laughs> I have to gain at minimum on my mic, by the way. <laughs> no, it's okay. I was just enjoying it. I just sort of went off on a tangent there just listening. Just <laughs> I'm like, of all the doing. locations, there's a stage right over here. They're sound checking. <laughs> like, you know, we don't get ad dollars on YouTube. We don't have to worry about copyright strikes, you know. Yeah. We can do our own thing. Sorry about yeah. that. Well, and I think uh, one of the other things is, you know, I, I produce a lot of demos and then and, uh, being a writer... I also, um, I, I always work with someone to, to come up with original scripts. And I, would just, I give them an assignment, we write something together, and so that everything is new. And it's really funny because sometimes people will look uh, and then they'll, uh, I know some, some radio stations would call me up and said, I didn't know this particular company was doing ads. How did you, how did you do that? And I go, oh, I, I just, they used that product and I just made it up. So they were like, oh. Dang, I thought I had a sale there. <laughs> so, but that's good, I think. I want it to be original. I want it to be interesting. And I want it to reflect the person's personality. And that goes back to, I don't want them to be me. You know, I want them to be them. And, that's, and I think that's a hard thing for, for a lot of coaches because you ha hear your voice uh, rattling around in your head. And sometimes I have to uh, hear myself directing that way. And I have to take a step back and go, whoa, hold on. It's better their way. Because I couldn't do it that way and get away with it, but it really works for them. All righty. We're answering questions from our humongous worldwide audience. Uh, George Ramos, or Justin Ramos has a question. George, why don't you take that one? It's a two-part. All right, now that it's quiet, I can do that. Yeah. Um, Justin Ramos from uh, YouTube ch chiming in saying, this is a two-parter for Elaine. Do you have a recommendation for VO schools in the Bay? Obviously, Voice Tracks SF or Voice One. Um, there's some obvious choices, but uh, what do you recommend? Well, I don't think that you have to limit yourself to the city that you're in. I mean, I don't have any connection with the school that I started right you know, anymore, and so it's uh, and I don't have a connection really with uh, with Voice Tracks um, because so I don't. Um, I, I'm not paying attention to really what they're doing at this moment. So I, I mean, I coach people uh, there. I send them to other people who are, you know, uh, that they can work with on Zoom. So, but if they want the, you know, they, they want to go there to either of those, that, those, that's fine. Yeah. And the second part of it is, uh, do you recommend any coaches for video game voice acting um, 
when she is just so booked, for example. So <laughs> yeah, if you're too busy. Else, if you're too busy. Who, <laughs> oh, like when I'm too to, busy? Yeah. yeah, like who else to go to for voice, for video game voice coaching? Um, I think that uh, Everett, Everett all of, Oliver is really good, and also Dave Fenoy. But some of them will, uh, I think that you need to do your research, get your foundation. What I find is that, well, I, you know, if you, if you have the right director, you have the right coach, it won't take long. If it's a not, not a good fit, you're going to feel it and it just takes too long. And it doesn't matter who it is. I mean, that's, that's the thing. And ha you have to figure out what's, what's working for you. So I have a, you know, I have a system that I work through. And it, just because I have everything listed doesn't mean I do that every single day. I don't go, let me start at the top and work through everything. And I'm going to write six plays today. <laughs> it's like it's this combination. I've been in the business for 40 years. It just, it just uh, you know, happens. So, and I try to, uh, that was one of the reasons why I sold the school because I was, I was directing and producing and acting during the day. And then I had classes on the, on the evenings and weekends. I said, if I keep doing this, it's going to kill me. So I, I thought, well, what do I want? I want the day work. So that doesn't mean I don't work sometimes on the weekend, but they're usually my projects or something like that. But I limit my evenings and weekends now. And my family loves that. They actually are seeing me sometimes <laughs> which is nice uh, sort of a follow-up to that what's the difference between coaching somebody for video games as opposed to just doing commercials or e-learning or something or like even that? A, or like even animation which may seem related to video games but is oh, quite different yeah. well I think that you have a basic foundation of technique so uh, and then when you have the technique down then it's about styles but you got to then know how to twist those styles. When, uh, what was really nice about living in the Bay Area is that it, we started out with a small commercial business and then Silicon Valley came in and then the corporate stuff took off. And then the, the video game business came in and we worked on the video games and I worked on a lot of toys and the toy business was going really big. And so I was able to grow when, when the business was growing. So now when people come in, they're just, you know, thrown into it. So I think you have to figure out whether or not you are, you can learn a whole bunch of things or you just get muddy. Because I remember, you know, when I was just going from a commercial to a, to a video game, I would be too big for the commercial and I wasn't big enough for, um, for the video game because I would get it, got it all muddy in my head. What do I need to do stylistically? Technically, it was correct. So that's, that's the big difference. So you have to figure out what you can handle. And that's an individual answer. Right. Because you know, sometimes the video games can be, you know, lots of guttural stuff, lots of eh, and, and stuff that wears you know. people's voices out and stuff. And, and right. They, you know, and sometimes they'll ask you to be several different characters and they'll come back and say, well, it sort of sounds like you. How do you differentiate characters and stuff? What's, what's some of the well, techniques you use? You know, one of the things is... It, Everyone has a different vocabulary and knowing what the specs mean means something slightly different to everybody. And so after a while, you got to figure out what is that, what does that mean? Is, is introspective just going, hmm, I wonder what's going on or is it, hmm, I wonder what's going on? You know, what does that mean? You know, and that then becomes the, the choice of, uh, of the team that's working on that project. So, um, I don't know if I answered that, but I think you have to then figure out what is too big or too small. But this is where I have something that's in my uh, Real Talking Tips podcast about how to, uh, how to use the power box. So if I have the, the power box being, if I have something very small, and I have to talk about it very small, I'm going to have small movements that are right here. But now if I, I want to get bigger, my movement's going to be bigger. And it must be bigger, my body's going to get bigger. So I don't have to think about that at all. My body's telling me what to do if I get closer to the microphone or if I get further away. It kind of knows what to do because it's an ear. Right. Physicality. You know, I think some people forget that physicality is an important part of voiceover. You, you've got to be able to gesticulate and have room and not bang into your, your microphone stand oh, man. and stuff yeah. like that. And ergonomics is super important in your studio, in your booth, because you need to be able to do that and mm -hmm. have your script at the right place. So many times people have the script and... 
Oh, I just read it from my phone. Or I hold it on a piece of paper. It's like, no, you, that's yeah. like everything. The script is everything. It's got to be like right where you can see it. And mm -hmm. yeah, so physicality is a big deal. Yeah. Yes. Because that's how you create your 3D world that you're speaking in. So you got to know where everything's located. You need to know what your perspective is in it. And that's where, you know, whew, they're just, they're, I, and it's, and it, it incrementally gets in the body. You can't just say, tomorrow, I'm going to be great. <laughs> we we <laughs> say that. It doesn't always happen. But, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it, it has its own, it has its own schedule. <laughs> well, lots of praise from our viewers here. AJB yeah. voice actor says, uh, hey, Elaine, I just bought your book from Google Books. Yay. Thank you. Doesn't say which book, maybe all of them. But the whole, oh, just the whole all series. of them. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Tracy Rawl says, I took a couple of workshops from Elaine at her studios about 2001 or so. Her teaching helped me gain agency representation. Nice to see her here. Nice Thank to see you. It's always and a congratulations. pleasure to see you anyway. Fiber uh, Jazz says, uh, I don't even have a mic yet, and I'm already, I already want to hire. I don't know if they mean they want to get hired or hire. I think uh, they, but they, they want to hire Elaine. They're so excited yeah. they didn't... Uh, yeah, I'm nervous with all the emphasis that I hear about conversational style. Mm. My normal speech is quite animated. Am I in trouble? Ah, so it's a matter of, of your range. That goes back to the power box. So if you're very animated and they want it very condensed, you have to bring it down. So it's like if, if, you, take, if you take your hands and you put tension on it as you're making it smaller, you're actually engaging more of the muscles in the core. So that's how you can bring it down. And then when you're going, bah, bah, and you're making it really big, you're, cause a lot of times it's, you know, looser muscles and, you know, kind of like, woo, like doing the way, woo, I didn't use, really use any muscles unless you're playing a character that's got some grit, you know? So it's really uh, what I always do when I'm finding a character is what's the core location of the character and how can I build from there? So that's, Anyway, it's it's just how to how to how to do that. Right, um, right. Well, he, he's saying you know he's he says I'm nervous with all the emphasis that I hear about conversational style. You mm -hmm. know, there there are some people that just you know they'll send me a demo or, or so I can hear their audio and I'm like oh my god they're just over the top trying to be an announcer thinking that that's what voiceover is and they're you know probably you know 50 years behind the times there. How do you get people, someone to get out of that, that announcer sort of, uh, you know, it's, mode mindset? Yeah. It's the imagination. You have to imagine where you are, what you're doing, why you're talking, what's your purpose. So we all have walked into a room and been either t been too loud and realized it, it was inappropriate. You know, it doesn't mean that you were not genuine to yourself but it just meant that it was inappropriate. So you got to figure out the application. And I think that that's why doing some research and knowing what the styles are and how they're going to be used and how you're solving someone else's problem, and then you're just offering the suggestion. That's what you're doing rather than trying to get the next voiceover job and making your voice sound lovely. You know, that's not, that's not conversational. No, exactly. But a lot of people keep doing that, which is why most people are trying to be in voiceover and some people are... They're swinging a miss. Swing yeah. and a miss. Swing and a miss. Yeah. All righty. Great question. Daniels. Yeah, great question here. It says, voiceover requires constantly altering slash manipulating emotional state to effectively emote. That's quite a sentence right there. Uh, um, I don't even this, know if I understand that. Okay. So. Okay. Well, can this impact one's emotional, mental health, stability in life? <laughs> ah, okay. Well, now that's a, like that's like a major acting question. Right. Uh, for some people, yes. I think well, if you're in commercials, um, we are happy, and that's I think one reason why the voiceover people uh, community are very happy people, because you have to, you have to, you go like, oh no, I have an owie, but it's fixed. <laughs> it really does. It's very. Uh, if you get into video games, it can be more intense. So, if there's a mental health issue dealing with a certain kind of game and a certain kind of character, say no. You know, but if but for commercials and narrations, typically, you don't really have a lot of those lot of those issues. Um, you know, just because it's just you have an hour, you fix it, 
everything it's all better it's all about the simplicity you always have to show the pain point just like with any business going back to the question about how do business execs I have to recognize what their pain point is and then um, work on get on getting rid of that pain uh, identifying it getting rid of it and then having a solution at the end that's everything that we pick up so even George was talking earlier the pain point was with actors with source connect going how do I use it and you're going like some of the pain points about to go away you know so that yeah. it becomes more actor friendly friendly and then we go whoa hmm, yeah that, right. that's what we're looking for friendliness and I think I think people I think he's wondering if he's going to become like Nicolas Cage because I think everybody <laughs> thinks of Nicolas Cage as being the character Nicolas Cage in real life because right. all they ever see of Nicolas Cage is on movies right, right. He even did that film where he plays himself in mm -hmm. real life as an actor, which right. is hilarious. It's so it great. It is. I like that. It's really um, good. You know, so I think that there's a, some concern of that happening. I, but certainly being an actor, I mean, I'm not an actor at all. Like, I have no training and I don't act. But doing the show, hosting this, being on, having to sound uh, articulate, string some words together, improvise a spot for Source Connect for six years, um, <laughs> all that kind of stuff, that's all skill that's built over time. And... It does bleed into real life because then when you're in it, I feel that I find personally that it's easier for me now to be in a mixed situation, sitting down for dinner or lunch with people I don't really know. And I can maybe sometimes I have to dial it back and not be on and feel like I'm hosting. Um, but I feel more comfortable and it's because of doing this year after year after year. So mm -hmm. hopefully whatever you get out of this training and practice of, and craft of acting and voiceover oh, will always in, end up being a net positive to you in your personal life, not a, not a negative at all. It, that's why it all comes down to communication. I don't really call myself a voiceover coach as much as a, a communication coach because it, it goes through the whole, you know, your whole life. So I would tell people, like, as you learn voiceovers, how you relate to people is very, very similar because it's not... The art of advertising is never to demand, but to suggest. And so when you suggest change to someone, they're more likely to take it, to make that change than when you demand it. And so all of a sudden you start doing enough of this and your regular day job, it starts seeping into your, your personal life. Yeah. So all right. I think that's a positive. Yeah. Well, Lane, thanks so much for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it. But I almost forgot... You also have an informative newsletter that George and I were actually featured in this month. We were seeing that and going, oh, there, there's my name somewhere other than, you know, on, in my mailbox. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> how can people sign up for it? Yeah, they can just go oh, to there my it website. Is right there. Well, yeah. that's the newsletter one. The other yeah. one, they just put contact. Uh, but if you can just go to the ElaineClarkVO.com. There you go. Um, website. I have a lot of information. It tells a lot about my background, you know, uh, um, about, uh, you know, it just uh, has the podcast, it has the newsletters, it has uh, events, all sorts of things. I'll even, I'll even put this on my website, too. Ooh. You're going to be all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've just made an appearance, so that belongs in your media and appearances Absolutely. section of your website. There mm -hmm. you go. All right, you need some sleep, Elaine. It's clear that you're just you're doing this 24 hours a day. And thanks so much for being with us. We, it's always a pleasure to see you, no matter where, but it's great having you on our show tonight. You too. We could just talk forever. So we can. Wonderful, and thank you so much for inviting me to on your show. All righty. All right. Well, George and I will be right back to wrap things up and get ready for Tech Talk right after these important messages, so don't go away just yet. You're still watching VLBS? <laughs> Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. There's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, 
Stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products, and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. VoiceOver Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources, and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions, bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports it's all here at voiceoverextra.com that's voiceoverxtra.com well guess what it's time to talk about voiceactor.com yeah it's a pretty simple website name but what they do is websites for voice actors makes sense and it's real real easy to be at voiceactor.com uh, all you have to do is go over there and you'll get your website set up like that because that's the whole idea. It shouldn't be a pain in the butt to get your, your website together. If you are a voice actor, you absolutely positively have to have a website. And if you go over to voiceactor.com, all you have to do is go in there, pick a template. You can change the colors, add pictures, do all this stuff. It's incredibly user-friendly. And you'll be able to get your website up and running in no time. And you can start off for free and actually have your website on, on the Internet, which is where websites are supposed to go. Uh, and then it's $20 a month. You get even more features with that. But if you have to have a website, which you absolutely have to do as a voice actor, go over to voiceactor.com. And that'll make things a lot easier for you for getting online. Thanks, voiceactor.com. We'll be right back after this important message. We are the World Voices Organization, also, also known, known as, as Wovo. We're the not-for-profit industry association of freelance voice talent. VoiceOver is a complex entrepreneurial business. Wovo is there to promote the professional nature of voice work to the public, to those already established in their voiceover practice, and to those who want to pursue voiceover as a career. Membership benefits include a supportive and creative community, community. a profile and demos on voiceover.biz, our searchable directory of vetted professional voice talent, our exclusive demo player for your personal website. Our mentoring program, business resources, and our video library. Our annual WovoCon conference, a fun and educational weekend with other members with, with the, the chance, chance to, to learn, learn and, and network. network. Webinars and great speakers and weekly social chats with other members around the world. If your world is voiceover, make Wovo part of it. World Voices Organization. We, we speak, speak for those who, who speak, speak for a living. living. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. Yeah, you are, and George and I are still here, and thanks again to Elaine Clark. One question there, is her app available uh, for Android? Yeah, we, she apparently says it hasn't is. shown up, but she says that it is. We got the thumbs up on that. So, All right, uh, so look for it there. I don't know why somebody couldn't find it, but uh, look on the Google Play Store for that. All right. Well, thanks again to Elaine for joining us. She's always a delight to talk to and has a lot to talk about, which is pretty amazing. Uh, next week on this very show, or if you're hanging out with us live right now, and I see a pile of you out yeah. there watching this show live, stay with us. We're going to do Tech Talk live in just a couple of minutes. And, uh, you know, it's for next week, but you get to watch it live and you get to ask your questions. So that's, that's really right. important. Being here Tech live has its privileges. That's right. It'll be Tech Talk 109 next week. Uh, George, you've got discounts and services for people? Yeah, we got the landing page. If you go over to georgethe.tech slash VOBS, anything we've got to promote to you guys, like our 10% off coupon code, is right there. So go check it out if you want to get uh, a discount. I, it's amazing how many sales come in that don't have a discount applied when I've got probably... 30 coupon codes floating around at this point <laughs> so there's always one you know to be found but uh, that's the one for us so that's vobs fan 10 is our current coupon code all righty and if you like this show which apparently a bunch of you do because we've only been doing it 12 years uh you can donate to the show to maintain the amazing technical quality that we have become that everybody's become used to no longer is it every week it's apollo 13 like it was 10 years ago but you're not it's, allowed to do that until you make a plug for jeff's imdb page 
Oh, that's I true. I just noticed that in the Tech Talk area. We didn't put it in this one. Oh, so there it is. If you yeah, want to find our, our man Jeff Holman in the chat room, go to imdb.com slash Jeff Holman. Go hire the man. He seems to know what he's doing on camera. Yeah. Just a great character. He is a pro. He is. Uh, we need to thank our donors of the week because they have helped us can maintain this technical amazingness. Like Greg Cooper. Oh, thanks, Greg. Grace Newton. Christopher Epperson. Robert Leadham. Stephen Chandler. Crazy Clack. Crazy Clack. <laughs> crazy Clack. Crazy, crazy Cracker. <laughs> Casey Clack, that is. Jonathan Grant. <laughs> Thomas Pinto. Greg Thomas. A Doctor Voice. Antland Productions. Martha Khan. 949 Designs. Sarah Borges. Philip Sapir. Brian Page. Rob Ryder. Shauna Pennington Baird. Don Griffith. Trey Mosley. Diana Birdsall. And Maria Mackis. And Sandra Mandler. I just wanted to get that last and. And you want to get the and in there. Okay. You can join our mailing list, by the way, and uh, just go to our webpage, uh, vobs.tv, and there's a little thing there that says sign up for our mailing list, and you'll get to know what's going on. Uh, we need to thank our sponsors as well Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. Oh, we also have Har uh, VoiceOver Extra. Good. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActor.com. And. and worldvoices.org the industry association of freelance voice talent uh, yes we also need to thank jeff holman throw the imdb thing up there again and uh so we can because jeff runs our chat room and and he's doing a great job with that uh sue merlino for being an amazing director and making sure that everything is there when it needs to be there and lee penny just because he's he's lee penny uh well it's stay tuned for Tech Talk right now. You know, this is not an easy business. You've got so many things you got to learn. You can listen to people like Elaine Clark and some of the other great people we have on this show telling you what this business is all about. But when it comes to your audio, we've just come to the conclusion, if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. BS. Stay tuned for Tech Talk.